My name is Dennis Pulley. Today we are going to refit a gas water heater to an electric water heater using only this an electric burner from your friend's stove. First, a little background water heater is the tank that's in your closet, sometimes in your attic, and every now and then it's even outside. It's a tank that you never worry about, never think about until you run out of hot water. You may want to change it over to electric, it's easy. It's relatively quick, it's free with friends, and it can be somewhat safe, but not safe enough. So if you're a housewife, you're watching me, turn it off. This is not for you. This is a temporary fix because you no hot water is an inconvenience, but a fire in your house is an emergency. So no hot water is an inconvenience. But a house fire is an emergency. We start by removing the flue from the top of the water heater and removing the element from the inside. Four foot metal thing comes right out the hole at the top. And then we've got to fashion this into some sort of cylinder to fit down and take the place of that element. Uh, it's not impossible at all, but it does take slow, steady bending. One crack, one fracture, one nick, and the electricity stops making heat and starts trying to find another way out. And it's going to be inside of a metal cylinder. Nothing good will come of that. So, let's start by removing this metal piece, which is just pressed on. And also this prong that holds these two together. Yeah, you have to cut that sucker, which is easy enough to do with any tool. And I've got the right tools, but this one's right here, so. Since I've already done it, I'm going to show you what we're fashioning, because that's going to give you a, a giant leap on what, what I had to do to figure it out myself. This. was bent from this. It, uh, I'm not going to say it's going to take trial and error because all you want to do is bend it good enough where it will fit down in there with without breaking or cracking it. I ended up with about 20 inches long, which is pretty good. The longer the better because water heaters are can be pretty tall and you want to take as much of that space as you can without you can't without the wire going to the bottom both wires have got to be at the top of the element when you get done because otherwise your wire is going to be passing right through your element the element's just going to burn your wire so that's the drawback because stove elements are only so big and I did pretty good with 20 inches. I would have liked a lot closer to five foot because that's about where my water heater is. All right, anyway. So we've got our element bent. We've test fitted. It goes in, it's, it's perfect. What now, we have to do now. All right, got your element bent. You've test fit it, shoved it down the hole, it fits, everything's great. Now we have to wire it. These are built to run on 220 like your stove is. We're not going to do that. We're going to run it on 110, which uh, by the math puts one quarter power through it. So it's not going to get red hot. That's great. That's what we want. Because how, how would you even sleep with anything like that? So what I did was take a cord off of my wife's hair dryer. You don't have to tell her, she'll find out shortly. Because it's got this GFCI on it. That's going to pop. It's like an extra circuit breaker. And it's also a push button. So you can... Just safer. Just safer. It's meant for, for heat. It's meant for high voltage. It's as safe as I can think of. Now I've got one four foot long. Because that's what my wife had. It's long enough to reach whatever cord I needed to go into. The other thing you have to watch is when you wire, you're going to wire a negative 
and a positive. It doesn't matter which side. It doesn't have to be polarized. Two wires. Hook one up to each end of the burner. Nothing to it. You do not want the connection point touching anything. Okay? Nothing. So otherwise you're just... Well, otherwise you're stupid. You shouldn't be watching this anyway. What I did was I took epoxy and, and covered my connections just in case. All right, well, it's fit, it's wired, and it is heating water as we speak. We're going to see how long it takes. All right, took less than four hours. Water is up to nearly 200 degrees. For... All right, took four hours. A 40 gallon tank, water's up to about 180. That's that's perfect. I uh, couldn't actually ask for anything better. Uh, I did read that some people put timers on these. I'm gonna unplug and plug as needed. Uh, I don't see any reason to keep it running because, well, I don't wanna burn up my sleep and I have kids and they wouldn't like me if I did that to them either. So be careful, it's temporary. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. My name is Dennis Pulley. Today we are going to refit a gas water heater to an electric water heater using only this. An electric burner from your friend's stove. First, a little background. Water heater is the tank that's in your closet, sometimes in your attic, and every now and then it's even outside. It's a tank that you never worry about, never think about until you run out of hot water. If it's gas, it catches fire by itself a dozen times a day, goes out by itself, and you never think twice about it until now. For whatever